Aljo, you know, gang, gang. throughout your career, there's been questions of, oh, is he getting the respect he deserves? And, oh, is he getting the attention he deserves from the fans? This is a card built around you coming home. I'm curious if now you're here, you really feel like I'm the champion, I'm getting the respect, and this is my card that people are coming to see me fight. Oh, 100%. This shit is cool as hell, man. First main event, they're doing it the right way. So shout out to the UFC, Dana, Sean, uh, Hunter, Mick, everybody um, in the production side. Seeing that billboard outside of the Prudential Center where it's like, dreams come true, man. I, I have a quote that I put on my very first T-shirt that I ever made when I went pro. And it says, when I work, I dream. No, I just butchered that. <laughs> <laughs> I botched that really bad. Um, I dream, I work, reality. And that's what this feels like. It feels like dreams coming to reality, something I've thought about for a very long time. You know, I never really cared about, like, the main event spot until I seen it like this. I'm like, well, that is actually pretty damn cool. So it, it does feel good. And um, to see the, the energy that the staff has put behind it, um, maybe it's not for me to win. I don't really give a shit. I think it's cool either way, even if they don't think that I'm the guy who's going to get the job done. I like to play spoiler, and what better way to do that on the East Coast, first champion ever from Long Island to defend back home and just shock the world once again against another former champion. And did you guys know he was an Olympic gold medalist? I'm not sure if you guys got that memo. I believe he did win one or two, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you said that you feel like it's all built but not necessarily for you. I'm curious, do you think they're kind of rooting against you behind the scenes here? I don't know. I, I think the promotion has been relatively even. I'm just saying, like, like sometimes you could tell who's, like, the A side and who's the B side. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if they have, like, a real... I think they win either way because then the, the, the golden chicken, um, Sugar Booger, gets to... Uh, he gets to fight for the belt, which is what they want. And I think if he had went to me right away, they know I would have just ran him over. So they said, let's bring in a guy who could actually give this guy a test, probably upset him, and then maybe our Booger Sugar gets a better chance of winning against a much shorter and smaller guy. Um, that's my logic. I could be completely wrong, but that's just what I'm thinking. Um, but either way, I think it's a win-win. I think the UFC promoting me on the East Coast is a smart play. And... Uh, I like to be a good company man in the sense of like, yeah, I want to do good business with the company. I'm not trying to be against them. I want to make money together. Yeah. Henry Cejudo is a name that's probably been thrown at you a lot over the past few years, but it was never really sure. Is he actually going to come back? Is he going to fight? Now that you got the fight, what do you think of it? Are you happy that you're fighting Henry Cejudo? Like you said, he's a, a decorated former champion. He's a very, very good fighter. Now that you're actually facing him, what are you thinking about the matchup and how excited are you for it? I'm very excited about the matchup. Uh, in the beginning, I thought it was a joke because he's been sitting on the sideline just making YouTube videos um, and just criticizing everybody after he quit and took himself out of the competition. So uh, I respect everything that he's done, but once it became real, when he put himself back in the testing pool, then it was something I could actually entertain. And then the UFC offered it when I went to go meet with them. I thought it was a joke. I was like, I didn't think he was actually coming back, but they said he was. And uh, I accepted the, the challenge right then and there, you know. So um, I said, if you guys think this is going to be a big enough fight and that's going to draw the most eyes for me, then I'm in, you know. I, I'm here to do good business, and that's what it's all about. It's a good challenge. Um, so with that being said, I, I think I have my hands full, but I think the work we did should be more than enough to put this guy back into retirement. I really do think so. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you guys ran into each other earlier this week. He was back here and he said, actually, he didn't really like that. He said that you came over trying to butter him up and actually he wanted to tear your face off and you kind of caught him off guard to make him a bit more friendly. Um, what do you make of him as a person, right? Obviously, he's got the shtick and I'm sure the press conference will have plenty of surprises for you. But what do you think of him as a as a character and, and do you enjoy it or do you just think, oh, you know, you really are cringy? It, he is a cringy guy. Um, and I think he's just very socially awkward. Um, other than that, as a competitor, I respect him and everything that he brings to the table. Him talking about he wanted to rip my face off. I'm like, if you want to rip my face off, you would have shown a little bit different energy, but you were unsure of yourself, which you're going to be unsure of yourself in that octagon on May 6th. So either way, um, I, I, he's just a strange cat. So um, I'm not looking past him. I think he might be underestimating me. And if he does, that's going to be his uh, shortcomings on May 6th. And last one for me. 
it's kind of started now, right? The conversation of goat, bantamweight goat. You know, I know that you've given always given props to Dominic Cruz, but you beat Henry Cejudo. Your name is firmly in that conversation, whether you are or not. It's obviously everyone's going to debate, but to have your name actually finally in that conversation, how does that feel? It's really cool, man. It's um, you know, I had a couple of goals when I got to the UFC. Was obviously to become a UFC champion. We were able to do that. Um, defend a couple times. Um, you know, this getting into the sport was about changing my life and uh, traveling the world, meeting great people. And I was able to do a lot of that. I got to travel the world with my friends, um, my training partners, um, show friends and family different side of life that we never knew was possible growing up where we grew up. So I feel like I have already won. You know, whether or not people want to cons- include me in that conversation, that's that's cool. It's something that's. It's nice to see that I'm in that conversation whatsoever. That's that's a cool feat. But at the end of the day, um, I got to win for anything like that to really be a, a serious conversation. I still look at Dom, and I think we're all chasing his record. Because I think when the UFC brought over Strike Force, all their wins were counted towards UFC wins. So why aren't the WC wins counted for UFC wins as well? So in my book... We're all chasing um, Dominic Cruz. Yeah, you could say Henry beat Dominic Cruz, but he beat him on short notice. You know, I'm not trying to take anything away from Henry. He beat who they put in front of him. The same thing I've done over the years. Uh, but this would be a great opportunity for me to solidify myself as one of the best to ever do it. I'm already tied for most wins in the bantamweight division. Should be the the highest, but they they kind of jipped me on the uh, Henry Burrell fight because it was a catchweight. The week of the fight, they changed it to a catchweight from a bantamweight fight. And... Uh, I got robbed of a win that should be in the win column for Bantamweight. So I should have 14 wins, but instead I have 13 for Bantamweight, but total 14. So with that being said, um, life's good. Beating Henry Cejudo, being in that conversation, that's just icing on the cake. And I can't wait to take that cake and just smash it all over Henry's face. I'll do it. Going back to the encounter you guys had in the lobby. Um, what did you think of like what he was saying? Like he's telling you he had a really good camp and like things like that. Like some of that stuff seems kind of obvious, right? It, it I think it goes without being said or needing to be said. I don't need to tell someone I had a really good camp. You know, like I, I would hope so. I'm not gonna say, yeah, man, yo, camp was really rough, man. I you know, I stubbed my toe. Um, I couldn't get out of bed one morning. I was really tired. I felt sore from the workout. I didn't do that ice bath. I should have did. It's like, okay, this is what I'm talking about. When he he could be a little awkward I'm like I don't know how to respond to that you had a really good camp I'm like all right I I think you did I hope you did because that is what we're about to do we're about to fight and I hope we both properly prepare to give the fans a good show um with that being said I I just I just think he's just a strange bird man he's just a strange bird yeah um how was your preparation obviously they wanted this fight a little bit earlier you had the health issues you're just kind of taking care of um when did you know like I'm feeling to where I want to be to do this fight uh i mean honestly bio accelerator wanted me to take three months off i was like dude i gotta fight in like 10 weeks i don't think there's a time to take three months off to fully heal everything up and do the full extensive rehab but they said trust your body listen to the the, everything the stem cells are going to work um so thankfully i do feel better with that uh, I know some people are going to say, oh, he's coming to the fight injury. Guys, we all come to the fight banged up. None of us come to the fight 100%. Henry's got a stupid scar on his face that I can't wait to split back open. Um, so other than that, I thought training camp has been ideally, like, it's been fun. It's been good, you know. as In the words of Henry, I had a really good camp. <laughs> Um, and with this win, I mean, I know you've addressed the 45 thing a little bit, but sitting here today, a couple of days out from weigh-ins, like, do you feel, you know, you could do this a few more times at this weight? I mean, anything is possible. Um, but, you know, obviously I win, and if they do offer the O'Malley fight, um, I think it would be a little selfish of me not to honor that you know especially when we have another guy in our gym who's right there on the cusp for a title shot so um we'll see we'll take this one fight at a time i could i could go out there and lose and morale could be fighting for the next world title you know so life's good long island's gonna keep the belt one way or the other and i think that's a a positive way to look at everything so uh 
this weight cut sucks. <laughs> I'm 33 years old. I'm getting older. It gets harder as you get older. There's certain things I used to get away with that I can no longer get away with, like having a piece of like Twix or a Snicker bar during the weight cut process just to feel better. Like oh, I had something um, or a cookie. I can't do any of that shit anymore. Um, and I just go to show you father time is undefeated. So eventually I think I could go up with the help of the UFC PI. I could get a little bit bigger, um, fill out into my frame, put the weight on the muscle on the right way and make a good run at 145 as well. Yeah, and you mentioned you know, uh, Father Time's undefeated. I'm sure you've seen the stat where between flyweight and welterweight, fighters who are 35 and over are 2 and 22 in title fights. And Tyron Woodley was the person who got those two wins. And Henry's obviously 36 years old now, so he would be the only other person if he wins this fight. Um, what do you think that kind of says, especially with these lower weight costs? I mean, we see older champions all the time at middleweight, light heavyweight, heavyweight, but it seems like at bantamweight particularly it's harder to do it it's much harder to do it man these guys are young and hungry I mean and if you look at a guy even like Cody Garbrandt he came in he won the belt at 25 over Dominic Cruz and then uh, TJ Dillashaw came and took the belt from him you know so it, it's been it's harder to keep that belt um, than it is to get it so to speak and a lot of those guys who do get the belt are getting it while they're young Jan was young when he got the belt um, Garbrandt was young when he got the belt. Dominic Cruz was young when he got the belt. Uh, Henry Ciudo was younger, I want to say about four years, maybe five years younger when he got the belt originally at 125. So I think it's harder to do it as you get older. I'm not that much younger than the guy. Um, with that being said, I like those statistics, and I want to keep that going in the right direction. So let's make it two for 29. Uh, in front of you here, um, you know, it, it's an interesting kind of a thing because th there's been a lot of talk of if Henry were to get the result, he'll just go up and he'll fight Volkanovski immediately. But I feel like they would probably make you do one at, at featherweight before you uh, you you get the fight. Ah, uh, I don't know. I think it depends on how I get it done. Yeah, I think I go out there and smash this guy and make it look easy. It's never easy, but if I can make it look easy, I, I think there's an argument to be made that I earn my my keep. Um, setting the record, I mean, why not? Unless, unless the the O'Malley fight is really something that they really want to do next. Um, but it all depends on the fight. I think they kind of change and pivot based on the performances to make sure that their their guy gets the the I don't want to say the easiest path, but a better path to success. And you feel like you're not their guy at the moment. I got a style that's different. You know, Amali's got a really fun style, if I'm being honest. He, he knocks guys out. He's pretty much predominantly a stand-up fighter. And I think the fans and the casuals out there, they would prefer to watch that. That's why it's, it's ideal for guys like me, um, even Henry, um, or Rob, and all of us when we're doing our YouTube channels and things like that to educate the fans on the grappling so they understand that aspect of it and see that there's more to MMA than just the stand and bang Um we mix it up and we do it well and we make it exciting as well. So with that being said, hopefully I can shift that narrative and the, the general fan base will start to come around more to grapplers. I'm not talking about grappling, take the guy down, just lay on the guy. I'm talking we take him down, we're landing for pun we're looking for punishment, we're looking to pass guard, we're looking to submit, we're making it active. And I think that's what grappling is missing where you see some guys that come in and they, they'll just keep you against the cage or um, they won't even throw any knees. They would just keep you against the cage. Kind of like that, what's that, Sabatelli kid? Um, Sabatella? Yeah, that kid who he had how many takedowns and did dick. You know what I mean? It was just super weird to watch. It's like you're in a dominant position. You're not going to punch the guy. Are you in a wrestling match or are you in a fist fight? You know, so I think it's up to us as grapplers if we're going to use our grappling to keep the fans engaged with the grappling, um, keep looking for more action. And I think that's what's going to make it fun. When you, when someone gets taken down, they get pounded. Pause. Uh, that's fun for me to watch. You know, it's the same thing as like watching on the feet. It's, you can see some stale stand-up fights, but it, I think it's up to us to make it more exciting for the viewers overall who don't necessarily train or understand the, the sport. Thank you. Hey, I'll over here. So you know, two thirty-eight UFC two thirty-eight. That's when Henry won the belt. You were also on the card with Henry. Have you been envisioning envisioning this fight for a long time? Mm, uh, yes and no, because I wasn't sure if he was going to be 
I, I just wasn't sure if he was going to be the champ for that long because I, I had questions about Marlon. Yeah, he knocked me out, but I had questions about him in terms of his overall package. Yeah, he's very dangerous in that first round. Um, Henry was able to weather that storm and come back and, and get the, the a nice emphatic win, so good for him. Uh, I wasn't sure what his goals were. I just felt like he was always a little too small for the weight. I thought that was a favorable fight in the sense of height. Um, yeah, he's still dangerous. He's a much bigger guy in Marais. Um, but he slowed down, and I think with us, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for him to run into guys who are going to slow down that are also going to be a lot bigger than him and can actually grapple. So with that being said, uh, I haven't been thinking about him like that, and he retired shortly after, not much longer after that. So um, here we are now. Get the opportunity to fight an Olympic gold medalist, a two-division champion, and um, this is going to be a memory in my life that I'm never going to forget. And in your two's meeting in the hallway the other day in the hotel, you kind of got your first chance at a little face-off during fight week. How did you feel like you guys sized up against each other? I just got to remember how small he is, you know? And, yeah, he can be small, but he's dangerous. He's a very technical, very smart guy, cerebral. He's going to have a good game plan, him and his team. Um, but it's up to me to show that my YouTube channel is better and we break down fights a lot better. And uh, I look forward to doing that on May 6th. And then last one for me, Aaron Rodgers the Islanders, the Mets, you know, New York City sports is on fire. And now you're headlining a card right next to the city. How does it feel, man, to be the center of the city's sports talk? It's it's a blessing. It truly is. Um, I, I, I don't take this life for granted whatsoever. That's why I, even after fights, I like to take some time to smell the roses because you get so entrenched in the work that you forget that life is still going on. People still have events and occasions, and it would be nice to be able to catch up with friends and family and things like that before you're an old man and you don't get to enjoy anything that you work so hard to build. Um, and that's truly how I try to live my life. And MMA has taught me that. Wrestling has taught me that, but MMA has really taught me that because this, this game could be very unforgiving. One moment you could be on top of the world, one loss can change everything, and you could feel like, like a complete loser for some people in their, in their minds. So it's up to us to keep it in perspective that this is just a small part of our life. It's a small phase, and we could do anything we put our minds to, and that's what this is all about. How much work you put in is going to be the sacrifice that you get and what you're going to reap out of that. So being in this position, New York's in the – they just won big game uh, in the playoffs, which hasn't happened in a very long time, and I want to keep that, that winning streak going. And on May 6th, I plan on doing such. Al Joe over here on your left. You've been fighting at the top of the division for the last few years in arguably the best division in the UFC. Um, going against Henry stylistically, what kind of what kind of different challenges he offer maybe in a different way to other guys you've competed against? I think Henry just has better anti wrestling in the sense of his wrestling is going to be sound. He's going to know how to hit a wizard. He's going to know how to keep wrist control. He's going to know how to fight in those positions. And I think. I do it just as well, probably better, because I utilize that a lot more in the fight. So with that being said, uh, he's going to be explosive. He has really good feints. I know he likes to chop down the legs on guys that, that move a lot. He's going to have a hard time with the reach. And uh, if he does get inside, we got some presence waiting for him when he, when he does close that gap. So if I was him, I would tread very lightly on how he steps into that fire. Uh, I know he thinks that I can't hurt him. And I can't wait to show some of the things we've been working on behind the scenes. Uh, you might, you could get a couple, a little glimpses of that on my YouTube channel, Funk Master MMA. So definitely go check that out. And uh, I forgot the other part of your question, but just know I'm going to whoop that kid's ass for a single de mile all my Mexicans that he's disrespected. Um, what do you think about the size difference? Do you think he'll be surprised once he gets in there and feels your strength and when you guys start grappling? I think so. I think TJ tried to play the same mind game, saying that my wrestling was D3, his is D1. Uh, you can't compete with me. How are you going to take me down? You can't hold me down. Um, my wrestling's way better than his. Now you got another guy saying the same exact thing, regurgitating the same exact stuff, and I'm just like, what does that have to do with the fight? Bro, it's a fight. It's not a wrestling match. We're not going out under the lights to go wrestle in a singlet. We're going out to go punch each other like gladiators. Um, so with that said, I, I look forward to the challenge. And we'll see how good his wrestling really is. I think he's going to be very surprised how much stronger I, I, I am than I look. I know sometimes people look at me and they, they're very unassuming. I could be very unassuming on what they think that they're seeing. 
And uh, we've worked with some bigger bodies. I made sure I got some short, compact bodies that are very strong and, and blocky. And they might not have the best wrestling, but they can give me that strength and that center of gravity, that low center of gravity where I need to get underneath the hips to take them down and to keep them down. And again, like I said, I think we did more than enough good work. Henry needs to win by a finish, like a TKO or a KO. For me, I got multiple ways to win. And I think on May 6th, it's going to be hashtag long night for Henry. Lastly, for me, do you think um, in the striking he will look to try and stay on the outside, or do you think he's going to be looking to shoot? Like, where do you think he's going to be looking to go? <laughs> I hope he stays on the outside. I'm going to pick his ass apart. I, I really do think so. I think this might be my first stand-up KO. Um, I would like to get the takedown and then TKO him on the ground, but I think if he tries to strike with me on the outside, I get to pick him apart and really display my striking once again like I did against Pedro Munoz, like I did against Jimmy Rivera, and these are all high-level strikers. Uh, I would say better than Henry Seyudo. So if he thinks that he's bringing anything different that I haven't seen, I'm bringing something he hasn't seen yet. I'm bringing the funk, and that's a completely different style, something that's very hard to prepare for. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm going to do in there. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Aljo over here on, on your left. Um, you mentioned earlier about why you got into the sport and you know see the world and that you've already won and bring your friends and, and family along for the ride. Uh, is that something that's in your training or you just in daily life? Is that front of mind for you or is that more back of mind at this point for you in your career uh still in front of mind I, it, every training camp is very difficult and after it, you just want to decompress you know i haven't drank at all this camp i normally drink in every training camp um i'm not getting smashed but like after a hard training session if i felt like after a few weeks of training i feel like i'm in really good shape i'll reward myself with one or two drinks and that would be like my nightcap to kind of unwind and get ready for the next training session the next day. Uh, this camp, because it had the stem cells, I didn't want to kill off the stem cells. I opted not to drink at all. So I'm going to get crazy after this for sure. Going to turn up a bit. Um, we got a couple of after parties in uh, New York City. And I know people were like, oh, you're looking pacified. I'm like, no, I just understand work-life balance. This is work. After that, like when you punch the clock, you get off the clock. You like your happy hour? I like my happy hour. This is just a different way on how I like to do it. So I like to unwind um, just like everybody else. I'm, I'm no different. I don't, I don't think I'm better than anybody else in the sense of h h how I live my life or the things that I do. Um, I, I feel like I'm an everyday person, blue-collar worker. And fortunately for me, uh, things have worked out where I was able to still become a prof professional athlete, travel the world, and MMA has afforded me that opportunity to go to places that I never even thought would be possible. Like, I only knew Uniondale. I didn't know Australia. I didn't know the UK. I didn't know any of those places that I've been to. I've traveled to, what, like 15 states already? That's something I never thought I would ever do. You know, we didn't have that type of motivation. So this is just, I, I, I might sound like a broken record. It might sound cheesy or cliche, but this is legit for me, icing on the cake. So going out there, smashing this guy, and regardless of result, you know, it's in God's hands. Regardless of result, I'm still going to enjoy my life the way I'm going to enjoy my life. I look at life glass half full. I think if people start to do that more, uh, you would have a lot more positive experiences. I think that's what it's all about, perspective. Everything is perspective. Um, losing is it's a part of life, and I don't really consider losing as learning. But I truly do think we did everything enough in our power to fuck this guy up really bad. And uh, I can't wait to go out there and do that. over here you talked about obviously moving up to 145 so I'm just curious on, on how you think Volkanovski and Yair Rod Rodriguez fight goes that's a really intriguing one I think that's more dangerous for Volkanovski because if he takes Yair down he's going to have some trouble on the ground uh, I know Yair has been ground and pounded before but that was the younger Yair this one knows how to fight off of his back knows how to use his elbows and use his length and his reach um, that's a dangerous guy and the way he kicks my biggest fear in fighting has always been those guys who kick really fucking hard. Those are the most dangerous guys to fight because at the end of the day, we, we see the punches coming. Sometimes the kick comes behind the punch. You never know. And it's like getting hit to the head with a baseball bat. So, yeah, yeah, you watched that fight with Emmett. It was beautiful violence, attacking the body, southpaw, off the docks, question mark kicks, um, trying to go for like the wheel kicks and shit like that. That's a dangerous guy. Volkanovski's really good with his feints. He's good with that 1-2. That He's got a good uh, overhand, a good cross. 
good good leg kicks. He does a good job of like attacking that inside leg kick and using his feints to really off center and off balance people with really good timing. And we show that his grappling defense has gotten better, but yeah, he's not going to really grapple with him. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how Volk approaches that fight because I think that reach advantage, I think that game, that style, the flashy kicks and things like that, the hard kicks, that's going to be very problematic for a guy like Volkanovski. Um, he's going to need to be doing a lot of evasion. I felt like even when he fought Max, Max did better with him when he when he started to open up with more kicks. When he just primarily boxed with him and made it a boxing match, I thought Volkanovski was more so clearly winning those rounds. So it's a very intriguing fight. I like to see how both those guys prepare for each other and, and see what that one's going to look like. Follow my YouTube. <laughs> Henry actually said he had a better YouTube channel than you. Uh, yeah, his YouTube is pretty good. See, he, he likes to tear everybody down. I give the guy credit. He does a good job with certain things, you know. I don't got to shit on the guy. Um, I'm just going to shit on him on May 6th. Hold on, one more. I saw that you visited um, Jamaica. Yes, yes. To. So do you think there will be like a UFC in Jamaica in the future or something? Or do you think that's quite like far-fetched? I think I go out there and do a, put on a great show. Um, myself, Randy Brown, um, Leon Edwards. I, I think there's a, there's a good high hopes for that. And why wouldn't the UFC want to go to Jamaica? That'd be a good place. Wouldn't you guys like to go to Jamaica and go hang out? It'd be a nice little training vacation. Um, so we'll we'll see. I think I go out there and have a good performance. I think nothing's out of the realm of possibility. I, you know, I would like to help them get established with like a, a feeder organization for the Caribbean. Uh, we're going to try to work on that after this fight. We'll try to get those conversations going again. That would be something that would be really beneficial for just the island in general of Jamaica. You got Barbados. You got all these islands right next door. You could have, like, something that could be a Caribbean fight championship or something like that. I think that would be pretty dope. King of the Islands. Something like that. Easy. Guys, hit me up for branding if you need help. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, that's really it. I, I would love that, though. That would be an, an honor to, to have something like that. And I think it would be very monumental in growing the sport in Jamaica. Peace.